Okay. Hi, everyone. I can't believe this. I mean, um, you all have an entire day of just sitting and listening to speakers talk, and you all aren't bored. I mean, it's an amazing energy that I'm feeling here on stage. We should clap. So yes, uh, I think you all remember me. <laughs> I, I didn't know you all would remember me. Um, yeah, so my name is Darshit Safari, and uh, you all saw me very prominently in the film Paris Amin Par. I played. Yes, that's okay. Thank you. Uh, I played. Uh, hey, I need extra time for this. Uh, <laughs> so there's. Um, I play the character of Ishan. And um, most of you all, I think, are um, still coming to terms with, uh, has he grown up? <laughs> uh, go check his teeth. <laughs> yeah, this is me, 100% real and authentic. I'm, I'm super excited and very, very happy to be standing here right in front of you. Um, you all are thinking, what am I going to talk about? And uh, frankly, even I am wondering <laughs> what to talk about. Um, but yeah, I think uh, most of you all are aspiring MBA and BBA students. And um, it's really funny that the people here at uh, Atlas Kiltech University decided to call an actor here from an absolutely different field. Uh, I think that there's something that uh, you all can connect with from my life, definitely. And if you all don't, just tell me. <laughs> I am um, mostly remembered for the first project that I've ever done. And I keep thinking that, how did I get this chance? Everyone keeps talking, you got this chance, you got this lifetime opportunity, uh, once in a lifetime opportunity. Mila hai. And I was too young to really understand the gravity of the situation at that time. And um, after that, I've continued acting. 16 years I've been in the industry. And uh, I've done various other types of work. I've done theater, I've done web series, shows, everything. And um, I still keep wondering as to how and why people still remember me for that first thing that I ever did. And I didn't actually do anything to get that chance. You know, people have to like take years of, uh, you know, hard work and um, memberships and classes and tuitions and every other thing to really get that chance. So I didn't do anything. Um, so I went back. We had a lot of free time in the pandemic. So I really went back to really understand as to what this chance was, how I got it. I was eight years old, way before the audition of the film. I was eight years old. I was extremely naughty. I was a uh, brat of a child. And uh, I had um, a lot of energy inside me. And my parents decided to keep the, use this energy to really good use. They said that we'll enroll him in dance classes. So I used to go and dance. I was a peculiar child. I had big eyes, small nose, and teeth that were almost jutting a foot out of my mouth. <laughs> almost. I couldn't even shut my mouth. But um, what used to happen is that um, I loved dancing. So they promoted me to um, a senior dance batch. You know, they have that one dancer in a group which, has, which is very eye-catching. So it was me. And I used to be in my own tune. So uh, they had dance performances almost every four months. And the best part was that the best, the biggest actors from the industry and the most like the celebrities used to come and watch us perform and support the kids. So that was a lot of the drive for me to dance. And I used to love dancing also, but I used to also enjoy performing in front of them. Um, so I was going to perform. This was about my fourth or fifth year. and. On my way to the stage, like coming from here, so there was a, I saw a notice, a hand-drawn notice of this person, like it looked like a person who was, who was doing the Usain Bolt pose uh, in red and blue. And it was written down, uh, the, oh, the first thing that I said looking at that to my friends around me, um, I can draw better. And this is some audacity because I didn't know how to draw for nuts, honestly. I, I, I was just, I had a superiority complex that very few could rival at that age. So uh, the first thing I said that I could draw better, and then I read uh, Opportunity to Work with uh, Amir Khan in a film, 
uh, age group uh, from 10 to 12 years. The first thing that came out of my mouth is, I'm not doing this. And I got my 2% of validation from my friends, from my guts to say such a thing. But inside, I knew I would never stand a chance because I was nine years old. So I went on stage. I, I decided that, OK, this is frustrating. I need to go and remove my entire frustration on stage and dance. So I danced my heart out. I danced so hard. I was supposed to slap my co-dancer. It was a fake slap. I actually really slapped that person. <laughs> I, I, I apologize, my friend, if you're actually saying this, seeing this, I, I'm really sorry for doing that on stage. And then I went back and I was feeling the energy and I was amped up and uh, there was a reaction also when I slapped the person because it's on silence. So everyone's like, oh, it was a real slap. So I enjoyed that attention. Uh, <laughs> and then um, uh, from the corner of my eye, because also because what happens is you're the shortest, so you'll be prominently placed. You won't be performing behind. So I was performing ahead, and from the corner of my eye, I saw Amir Khan enters and sits, and he started to watch a performance. I did not freeze. I did, I did not ha hamper my confidence one bit. I danced harder. I saw a dance director whispering something in his ear like this, and he's pointing at me. So I thought this might be my last dance performance. <laughs> I jumped off stage. I don't know. I didn't random stuff. And um, I don't know, very weirdly, this worked out in my favor. I, I got the trophy for the best dancer. I was very happy about it. Then, uh, just before, like a couple of weeks before the, this performance, I had befriended Amol Gupte, sir. Amol Gupte, eh, by the way, is the writer of the film and the creative director of the film, the soul of the film, rather. And I had befriended him. You know, they say, parents always say that you should not uh, go and talk to strangers. I was a rebel. I said, I will go. First thing, I don't talk to students, because I was very curious. So um, we developed pet names for each other. I used to call him Frog for some reason. And <laughs> he used to call me Ustad, which I used to love. Um, even he saw the dance performance. And right after, the atmosphere in my house changed suspiciously. I was, I was, I was thinking, yeah, why is everyone being so nice to me? <laughs> I think uh, someone has complained and uh, a big uh, explosion is going to come. So what's happening? And I was misunderstood. I mean, I'd, obviously, I was misunderstanding the situation. It was because they had invited me to audition. So I was over the moon as usual. I went, I went like some seasoned professional actor. I, I entered the room. And I won't describe what I did in the audition. Um, then um, I started telling everyone that uh, I've started shooting the film, hands down. I just, it's, it's, it's some other confidence I was living in. I, I, I was going to school first day I went, I went, this button, I opened my, this is not supposed to be open. I opened it and I went, I was, I was like, I've shot a film. And they're like, have you seen your face? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it didn't hamper me one bit. This disbelief actually was, I, I, I took it in my stride very happily because I was like, TK, these people don't believe me yet, but I'm, I'm shooting a film. Because I was called again for the second round of auditions. The thing is, I never understood what an audition meant. So I thought, well, film shooting, uh, <laughs> I don't know what I was. <laughs> so um, right after that, a month or so later, my mother came and she, uh, my, my, my father was out of town, and my mother came and she's like, Nashil, you're doing the film. And I said, happy realization. <laughs> she, she actually, like, she, the shock on her face, I mean, I, I laugh about it every, every now and then. We discuss. Um, she sat me down. She explained what an audition meant. I, I had been selected from amongst thousands of kids. And it's a, it's a prestigious opportunity. And also, finally, that I won't be doing the film. So I, <laughs> you know, all the sad Bollywood songs started playing in my head. I was living my own sad life. And in, I mean, I don't know how this happens, because I always feel someone or something up there is looking up on me, is looking, uh, having their hands on me as a safety belt. Because my principal got involved in this. My school principal, she had to almost convince my parents to allow me to do this. She was the reason why I'm even standing here right now. I think we should just clap for her. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. She, she, she said this. I was standing here like this as if I've done some big, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, mess up in class and uh, my uh, parents were there as if I'm, I'm the worst student ever. And my principal is like, uh, you know, it's not necessary that your child has to be always excelling in academics. It can be something else. And this opportunity does not come to everyone or every day. You should try it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. My parents, I saw them change their uh, expression and very dramatically I fell on her feet. I kid you not, this actually happened. And she almost slapped me for it <laughs> because I, it, was, it was all too much in the moment. So that's how I guess I got my chance because then that's thanks to her that I got the chance to put my, my step, on a, like, step onto a movie set because I was thinking, what are the odds? <laughs> what did I do to get this? And I, after a lot of overthinking and overanalyzing, I thought that I just had to do one thing right. I just, I was just being myself. I, all of that overconfidence and all of that ruckus that you saw me create was a part of the character that I was playing in the film. So I would honestly, like to all of you here who's listening, I would just say that I'm sure you all understood the importance of identity and being yourself and you keep telling people, your friends, everyone keeps saying, be yourself, be yourself. Don't be scared, don't hide stuff. But have a no holds barred approach, honestly. Like this is the weapon that will take you leaps and bounds into the future and in succeeding as to what you want to do. Just, just keep that um, self attitude, self um, identity thought in your head that okay, this is who I am and be true to yourself. You don't like something, you don't like it. You like it, you like it. I was like that. Then I, was, I had to change that entire thought process and unlearn it completely after that. But then after that, I was like, okay, what next? I'm doing a lot of work. I was flooded with a lot of work, thankfully, after that. And I wasn't getting that same reaction that, like, now the movie came out, started singing. It was such a heartwarming feel. And I'm like, okay, what about the other work that I did? Does anyone remember? My intent for that work was similar. I wanted to entertain you all. I wanted you all to feel good. Something memorable, some thought that you all take behind. So I was thinking, what next? How do I get this chance? A chance milni hai. Although imagine I was doing films, I was doing stuff, I was putting pressure on myself. You know, we all put pressure on ourselves. I, honestly, sometimes I feel I have blamed others around me for the pressure I put on myself. The first thing you're supposed to do when there's pressure around you is to hamper yourself. I, that's what I feel. You know, just just relax, just soak it in, understand. Okay, this is what you're supposed to do. Okay, get a plan because I trust me I no one taught me how to plan and no, no one taught me how to think and stuff like my parents were as clueless as me once we set foot in the industry so I I was like TK, I need to do a few things now in order to get this chance and I think I'm I'm very very close to cracking it now at this stage in my life 16 years after the film release first thing that I was decided that I locked on to was that I need to believe in myself okay Forget believing in yourself, believe, just believe. Believe in anything, anything or everything. If you just believe, no, that creates the core of everything that you want to do in life. It's, it's, it just, it's just the fuel that will get you out of your bed or whatever. You, so, so belief was the first thing that I caught on to. I said, okay, fine, I believe I can be an actor. And after that, I was thinking as to why do I want to act? I started asking myself those questions. I was like, am I, am I doing this because, um, you know, uh, people, I've already done the film, I've got the opportunity, I should just continue doing it. I need to consciously know what I'm doing. I need to be very familiar with what I'm doing. And I need to really have a strong mindset as to, okay, I really like doing this. So you ask the right questions. So the first question I asked myself was, is it for the money? So my, I, I said no, but my inner self said yes. <laughs> and um, then I was like, okay, uh, is it for the fame? Uh, my inner self said no, but my inner inner self said yes, absolutely. Because I was, it's of course, it's the fame and the money, it's the love and the adulation that you get, which makes you want to come on stage and perform, you know? It, it's uh, honestly, me talking right now is all the energy you all are giving me. So I was like, okay, fine. But what if I take both these away? I take the money away and I take the fame away. What, 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 what next? And then there was a <laughs> silence because there was no answer. I was just, let's see. I completed school. I got into college and I took the insanely instinctive decision 
of taking a break from the film from the film industry i i told my father standing like a hero in front of him all these decisions i take you know i think i'm backed by some legend you know when i when i talk to my father like this i'm like papa i don't want to work anymore and he's like uh, why you know you're getting a lot of work and it's it's really tough you know that she's so i was thinking yeah it'll be very tough for me to say no but in my head i was like that's my parents problem <laughs> they have to say no it's not my problem i can do what i want so i took a break mostly to really grasp what took place over the last 6 years of school so in school i met my friends i started dating and what not and after that uh, yeah it was the first time honestly i i i find out later today that in school people had started to date i didn't even know what dating meant i thought what date like this <laughs> this is how this is how i oh trust me i'm not kidding you know i was that dumb i used to think that if the teacher is giving you your papers i mean after you've uh, given an exam and she's giving you your results and your question your answer sheets are given and she asks you to do the corrections i used to think i, I should not do the corrections thinking the teacher's already done the corrections so it, it was in that space and that self confidence i had taken this decision ke theek hai i know everything uh <laughs> i discovered theater i performed i did a street play in front of a live audience and i was supposed to get slapped by uh, my co-actor and she had prepared me that i'm not going to slap you we're going to plan it full practice everything and i don't know what happened there because they were getting live reaction she actually gave me a slap and the hardest slap possible trust me there was an echo i was shocked i was in character i was shocked i was 10 times more shocked i gave a live performance it's already done okay so uh, right after that there was a um, reaction from the audience they 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 looked at me and they were like oh and trust me i was something i felt something inside me when i, I there was a relation that i felt with an audience a live audience at that moment and that's when i realized I love acting. I I want to do this. I can get slapped again and 10 times more. Because of this reaction, I was like, "Wow, man, this is cool." I I slept happy. Honestly, I slept happy that night. You imagine you get slapped in front of a 100 200 people audience, you're not going to sleep. You're going to black block the person this that. I was like, "Thanks. This is what I did." I I I was very happy. And and then I realized that yes, I love acting because I like people make, I like making people smile. I like to relate with an audience. I like um you know make them think something or you know like how I'm standing here right in front of you. So then I got my answer. I was like, "Okay, fine. Man. I want to continue acting now." Just two more steps. <laughs> after that, after the right questions. I mean, you you believe in yourself, you ask yourself the right questions, you're sure about what you want to do. And then you take decisions maybe you've stopped taking decisions absolutely i mean even i had honestly i was so scared of failing and saying no and getting being fearful of hearing the word no that i stopped taking decisions i was like okay baad mein let's do it later so i think taking decisions your probability is just about what it's a yes or a no it's a 50% chance that you're already right that's what you want right you just take a decision you know where you're wrong in fact what i believe honestly is that there's nothing or wrong because if even if you're wrong you tend to learn as to what you did was wrong and not to repeat that again so it's a win win both ends if you're right you're right if you're wrong you get to learn as to what not to do so you try again so you take your decisions i took my decision of doing theater for the last 6 7 8 years before the pandemic and i did that because i was thinking i want to polish myself as an actor i don't want to be a director's actor i don't want to be like some slave who's told what to do i i i want to learn i want to think from within as to why and have the organic thinking of an actor so i did theater this was all at a risk of moving away from the film industry in fact people around 2019 thought that i'd quit the film industry so this was a, at a risk but i took that decision and then the pandemic comes so all of a sudden that entire decision becomes the biggest failure of my life because theater going almost stops movie going stops and i'm thinking i've ruined myself this decision is too wrong it's going to cost me a lot many more years of my life but then what happens is right after things start easing 
And mind you, I didn't get stuck after realizing it was all doom for me. I, I continued watching films, web series. I, keep, I kept on polishing myself. I started monologuing, this, that. I started doing these things because I still didn't let go of the first step, which was belief. And because I was so sure about it. So right after, you won't believe this, I, I started getting offers after the pandemic started easing down. I didn't have to go and call people. It was naturalistically. And in fact, you see how different I look now. They were fine with it. They were like, Tiki, we want to see you as a different person. We want to see you as an actor now. So I was like, fine, let's try. So I started giving auditions. I started working out. Things automatically started falling in place for me because I did a few things right at that moment. And then I did films and web series. Now today, I'm doing films and I'm doing web series and I'm doing theater as well. I'm teaching. I'm, I'm doing so many things that I like to do, but I've been sure short about those things. And, and, and as long as the universe comes to the party, you know, uh, what happens is they, they say that the universe will give you your chance when it sees you fit for it. But getting fit for it is in your hands. You like to do what you do. You need to know everything about it. You, you need to be the encyclopedia. Trust me, I have my friends, my co-actors and everyone saving my name as Encyclopedia Safari. That's because I, I know everything. I, I try to learn everything rather. It's not even I know everything. That's the wrong thing to say. I, I try to learn. I'm like, okay, fine. This is what is happening. This, is, uh, this film has come. Okay, fine. That director must have thought of this film from where. I'm trying to understand, okay, how did this actor get into this mindset of giving this dialogue? So recently I watched that, the film that re recently released, a very popular film, and it was more of a documentary biography-ish. And I was just wondering how did they just deliver these lines? And I started making notes there and there. Because I'm very passionate, I'm very sure, sure about what I'm doing. So you need to do that. And the last step, final one, is just talk to your close ones, your close friends, your family and your relatives, or whoever, your friends, your, your close gang. Talk to them, share with them. I know this sounds really lecture and boring, but trust me, I used to think of myself as some lone warrior that I will go through all this experience and all this pain and the, the this excitement of um, working on something and the de-excitement of not working on something all alone. It didn't help me. One day I got bottled up, it came out as a, you know, rant. And when that happened, I felt two things. First thing I felt was, I felt lighter, of course. And the second thing that I felt was that when you tell your close friends, your family specifically, they see your passion and they naturally, unknowingly rather, align themselves with your goal because they love you. They want you to do what you want. They want you to do what you love. They just are not sure about it. So that's why they keep telling you, Ye kar, do this, do that. But if you're telling them something in that um, extent, that, okay, this is what I want to do. I have a short, short plan. I'm passionate about it. They're going to follow. In fact, they're almost going to not be avoid becoming hurdles in your path. Imagine you have no hurdles into doing what you want to do just by sharing and just with your close ones, people who matter. So I suggest you all start sharing. So it's simple. It's you just have to believe yourself. You have to get the right decisions. You have to ask the right questions. You have to take decisions, not be worried about being wrong. Share, communicate with your family, your friends, whoever you feel like, whoever matters to you. And then that's it. It's... The universe doesn't want you to fail. It, it's definitely going to help. Trust me, I feel that somewhere to the extent of what I'm doing today, me being here right now has also been somewhere manifested. So I, I think you all can tap into this, even if you all don't believe in this. Yes, I know it's, it's a long time. But yeah, I just feel like, uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, I hope that um, you all were able to extract something or the other from what I said. It was a pleasure being here. And um, yeah, thank you so much for... Uh, <laughs>